the 2020 census is upon us. Uh, you know, the, the decennial census is a foundational aspect of our democracy. It determines apportionment of seats in the Congress across the states. It allocates nearly $900 billion in federal funding to local communities each year. So it's important that we do a good job because we only get one try every 10 years. And so the, the key to the 2020 census is the enormity of the task. And so we're, we'll start the census next January in Tuxic Bay, Alaska, chilly Tuxic Bay. And in March, most households across the country will start receiving letters inviting them to go online and complete the census. Our goal is to count every person living in the United States on April 1st of 2020, count them once, only once, and in the right place. So geography is a central component to this. And it's a big job. To give you a sense of the scale, we're going to be printing 1.5 billion questionnaires, letters, and postcards to reach out to folks across the country. We're going to hire nearly 400,000 people to go out and knock on doors of folks that haven't responded yet. It reminds me of a story of this chief statistician, of, former chief statistician of Canada, Ivan Felagy. Somebody asked him once, how do you run a census? And he simply answered, scared. <laughs> so I think I know what he's talking about now. <laughs> but we're ready. We're confident. And how, and how do I know that? Well, because we've deployed several key innovations that is going to make it easier and more secure for folks to respond and participate in the census. And like I said earlier, geography is, is key to many of these innovations. And at the Census Bureau, we have a team of dedicated, smart geographers who have been working hard over the last several years to develop, deploy, and we tested these last year in Providence, Rhode Island. So to give you a better sense of some of the work that they've been doing, I'm going to introduce Deirdre Bishop, the chief of our geography division, and her team that will walk you through some of these mm -hmm. innovations. Thank you, Ron. Location has been important since the first census in 1790, when federal marshals conducted the census on horseback. We've come a long way in 230 years, notably because each decade we have the opportunity to assess our methods and tools and modernize for the future. Here are a few highlights of our geographic history in less than one minute. In preparation for the 1940 census, 700 draftsmen and cartographers hand drew paper maps of enumeration districts. Then, census takers physically canvassed each district to count the people. By 1970, the GIS industry was forming and the Census Bureau was leading the way through creation of an urban database. Digital maps enabled mail delivery of census questionnaires in metropolitan areas. One of the most significant innovations of our time was the development of TIGER. Using maps from the US Geological Survey with input from tribal, state, and local governments, together we created the first seamless topologically integrated map of our nation. While designed for taking the 1990 census, TIGER soon developed into a national resource for government, academia, and the private sector. It's one of the reasons that we can all now integrate spatial and statistical data to make good decisions. We head into the 2020 census better prepared than ever. Our goal is to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. The last part of that sentence is critical to the accuracy of the census. And to ensure we get it right, we've incorporated the use of GIS throughout our design. John Policino from our Spatial Data Update branch will now demonstrate our modernized way of establishing where to count. Throughout the decade, we have partnered with tribal, state, and local governments to ensure a complete and accurate database throughout the whole nation Every state, every county, every city, tract, block, and address, such as here in Loudoun County, Virginia, 
one of the fastest growing counties in the nation, and about 50 miles from census headquarters, or 30 mi th three hours of DC traffic, geez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in 2010, this area looked like this, and we had all the data we needed. But in the last 10 years, things have dramatically changed. Thanks to our partnership with the county, we were able to gain the authoritative data we needed to stay current with the growth and to ensure a complete road network, including all the associated addresses represented here by the parcel boundaries. Our partnerships, such as this one with Loudoun County and with many of you, have enabled us to validate more than 106 million addresses and millions of miles of roads, thanks to all of you. This has also allowed us to re-engineer our address canvassing operation, the method in which we update and validate our address list. Using this innovation, BARCA, the Block Assessment Research and Classification application, we were able to conduct address canvassing from our desks, as opposed to 100% in the field, as we have done in the past. Starting in 2015 and concluding a few months ago, we conducted a digital, interactive review of every block in the nation, many multiple times to stay current. In Barca, a technician receives a block, such as this one, and assesses it by comparing imagery from the last time we conducted address canvassing to now. In 2009, as you can see, there are mostly trees in this block. As I swipe the bar over, we see a whole new neighborhood. But in this case, we don't have the roads and addresses. By pinning this block for growth, missing roads, and lack of address coverage, this block will be sent into the field, where in a few weeks, a canvasser will visit it and gain all the data we need. What can take over two hours to canvas in the field now takes less than two minutes in the office. Thanks to our partnerships and our modernization, we have cut our field workload by two-thirds. Thank you, John. <laughs> our database of addresses, roads, and boundaries is also used to follow up, to ask the census questions when we have to visit households that don't self-respond. Anika adams Reefer from our platform implementation team will show us how. Thanks, Deidre. As census takers follow up with non-responders, they will use a mobile device to navigate to the non-responding households and to ask the census questions. Their entire workflow has now been enabled by mobile technology. For the 2020 census, approximately 350,000 census takers will take to the streets equipped with iPhone 8 mobile devices. Each device will be pre-imaged with the eCase enumeration application that we developed on top of ArcGIS Runtime. Before the census takers receive their case assignments for the day, they must submit their work availability for the week. As you can see, this census taker is available to work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. Behind the scenes, a route optimizer leverages data from industry leaders combined with census-specific criteria, such as work availability, and calculates the optimized case assignment list that you see here. Census developed this optimization tool to formulate the ideal ordered list of cases specific to the census taker using criteria such as where the census taker lives, the language that they speak, the best time of day to visit the non-respondent, in addition to the road network. So now that the census taker has this list, the first thing that he does is goes to the map, showing the cases assigned to him in this area indicated by these blue pins. The map allows him to be geographically aware of his case's location in relation to his current location, in relation to his other cases, and the map is navigation enabled if he needs help in getting to the address. In reviewing his cases, if he sees a pin with a number in it, this represents a multi-unit structure, like an apartment building. If he happens to be in an area with poor or no cell coverage, that's not a problem, because the vector tile maps reside locally on the device. Another census taker goes to her first case, launches a survey, knocks on the door, and begins the interview. Now, you're probably wondering, how can we be absolutely sure that she's actually at the front door of this house and not conducting the survey from, let's say, inside Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> well, the app is aware of her current location and will alert her and the Census Bureau if it calculates that she's too far away from the location of the case. 
This is another benefit of this app, to ensure that our census takers are knocking on the right door at the right time. She completes the interview, and the case is marked as inactive. Throughout the day, their completed cases will sync back to the server if there's a connection. Otherwise, they will sync once they have connectivity and transmit their cases back to census headquarters. The information is fed back into the optimizer each night to make the next day's assignment, and the process repeats daily. So as you can see, Census is modernizing field staff workflows by making every step in the process mobile-enabled with easy-to-use and intuitive applications. The benefits are faster data collection and submission, reduced use of paper, reducing the number of census takers needed by one-third, and reducing the number of local census offices by 50%. Thank you, Anika. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that after seeing Anika demonstrate our mobile app, many of you may skip self-responding to the census in order to see the technology in action at your doorstep. But please don't do that. We need to limit personal visits to non-responding households because it's the costliest part of the census. Answer our invitation to respond when it comes in the mail. To make it easy for you, we're offering three secure options internet, telephone, and paper. And you can respond anytime and anywhere. We've also developed new tools to help reach out and motivate people to respond. Suzanne McCardle from our Cartographic Products and Services branch will now show us how. We initially built the Response Outreach Area Mapper, or ROAM, to figure out where and how to focus our own 2020 census outreach efforts. But once we heard from many of you, it became clear that Rome can mobilize tribal, state, and local governments to do the same. Together, we are working to ensure a complete and accurate count for the places we all call home. Rome's national map of census tracts shows us predicted non-response rates. The darker the area is shaded on the map, the harder it is to count. And at this scale, one of the more noticeable areas is rural northeast Nevada. More than 30% of the households in these areas are likely to not self-respond to the 2020 census. Let's go across the country to a much different area. We can see that this part of Long Island is going to be much easier to count than the Bronx or Newark, New Jersey. But identifying these spatial patterns is only half the battle. It's learning about the people and households in these different neighborhoods that's critical to developing the appropriate outreach strategy. So let's fly over to Denver, Colorado, where government, community, and business leaders have come together to form a complete count committee. Members of this type of committee use their own trusted voices to engage and educate within the local community. And in many ways, Rome is simply validating and reinforcing what they already know about their areas, and in others, is revealing new things. For example, they're working to locate historically hard-to-count groups, such as households with young children. If we look for census tracts where more than 20% of the population is under the age of five, total population under five is greater than 20%, we find this one, where 38% of the households are likely to not self-respond. So what can the Denver Complete Count Committee do next? They can add their own open data to the map and choose the best location to host an educational workshop. For instance, it looks like Fairview Elementary School would be the best place to remind people that everyone living in their household needs to be included in their response. As of just last week, Rome now provides access to new summary strategic information about neighborhoods. Each census tract in the nation has been assigned to one of eight audience segments, and each audience segment is accessible right from the map. In general terms, it tells us who is there and how we think they'll respond. For example, when compared to the national average, Fewer people have access to the internet, and we're expecting fewer people to respond online. 
The Complete Count Committee can use this information to plan for an event once self-response opens, and then in real time, they can encourage their residents to fill out their census forms online, right on site. Rome is empowering this work like no decade before. We're able to make quick, well-informed, and responsible data-driven decisions to help motivate people to respond. You can access Rome and its underlying authoritative web mapping services by visiting census.gov slash Rome. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> Now that John, Anika, and Suzanne have showcased a few of our newest tools, I hope you're thinking, what can I do to help? First, complete your 2020 census form. Second, use your voice to be one of our trusted messengers. You understand the value of census data and the benefits for your community. Finally, this audience, better than anyone else, understands how powerful applications like Rome can be. Please engage with your state and local complete count committees. Teach them to use Rome to mobilize everyone to respond to the 2020 census. Thank you. Deidre, thank you. And I hope that you're impressed by all of the innovations that you just saw and along with the work that this team has done. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of people back at headquarters and around the country that are working to make the census a success next year. But all of our preparations will come to naught if households across America don't respond to the census. So take Deirdre's advice to heart. Respond online, over the phone, or on paper or we are gonna send somebody out to knock on your door. So, <laughs> but look forward to hearing from you all next year. Thank you. Ron, thank you. Thank you.